Hello, hello everyone. Well, I am almost settled in my new home and uh, of course a few things are here and there. So anyways, well, my skin is very dry so I'm using Glycomet. This is not sponsored but I'm just putting some Glycomet here on my hands while I talk because my hands are really dry and uh, we've been moving a lot so I've been scratching my fingers. I have this cut here. My nails are short because I was packing boxes and things like that. But anyways, you know, today I just thought I should talk about menopause because I have a lot of women in the audience who are post-menopausal and that's me. I'm 63 years old and I can tell you that menopause happens at different stages in our lives. I think it depends on your age, your genes, of course age <laughs> your genes your maybe your um what you eat you know your lifestyle your um, mental health or things like that i would think those are among the few things that make menopause different for women like i believe now i believe that i started my menopause when i was only 53 because then my period was was becoming less frequent i didn't have monthly periods then i didn't have hot flashes like everyone uh, says i think the majority of women undergo hot flashes during their menopause but i never had hot flashes based on what i hear so i feel that i'm very lucky that i didn't go through those but i do know that i was very emotional like extremely emotional during those months when I was 53, between 53 and 54, like I would be very sensitive. I would cry. I just found so much relief in crying. <laughs> like I just wanted to cry. Sometimes I would ask myself like, why? But I just want to cry. And then I just start to cry. Right. And now I think like, oh, because my hormones were everywhere. They were like, hmm, nothing was balanced at that time. And that's what happened. So now here I am, postmenopausal. I'm just glad that I didn't go through difficult moments that a lot of women do. But today, I do want to tell you that when we go through menopause, especially after menopause, the one thing that is really affected among us women is collagen degradation, collagen reduction. So in this episode, I just wanted to share what I've been eating since and why I think that I still am able to maintain not so bad skin at my age. And it's because of what I eat. Time goes by adding days to years. All I know. Welcome everyone to my channel. If this is your first time, my name is Jackie D and my goal is to help you find your better version, to make you feel good about yourself at whatever age, especially when we're older. Because when we're older, we feel like oh, we're no longer relevant, we're old, we're like dry, we're sensitive, we're not as good. You know what? It's fine to feel that way. But we always have to remember when we start feeling that way that, hey, we were young too. Back in the day, we also enjoyed our youth. So it's okay to not be young anymore. These things are stages in our lives. Let the young ones enjoy their younger years and let's share our wisdom so that the young ones feel better as they age, right? So we were young ones. We enjoyed those moments when we would just wake up and not have to worry about our skin and not have to take care of our hair because our hair is drying. And we would do things physically without hurting our bones, right? So yes, I'm your Rara girl. We gotta feel good about ourselves even as we age. You know, I always listen to these amazing dermatologists, Dr. Anthony Yoon and uh, Dr. Gray, and I just love that they're very informative and they really go into scientific research and they share their knowledge. So I learn a lot from them. And not only that, whatever they say confirms what I've been doing. And I go like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I've been doing the right thing. So today I wanted to talk about collagen. Yes, because as we get older, our skin really loses collagen. And that explains why our wrinkles show up more. Our, not my bandaid, <laughs> our wrinkles, our number 11s are deeper and things like that. And we sometimes wonder that the creams are not working because yes, 
I want to touch on moisturizers because some of us think that the more expensive a moisturizer is, the more effective it is. Not necessarily. There are drugstore moisturizers that are actually good. Just make sure you look at the ingredients and you can compare these ingredients with the expensive ones. And if they have the same, practically the same ingredients, why not? There are drugstore brands that are affordable. They're a little bit more on the pricey side, but they're affordable. Like Vichy, for example. I've used Vichy. And I love, I love how good it is on the skin. And it's not expensive. That's it. You don't have to spend a fortune to put moisturizer in your skin. But I would say that moisturizer helps keep your skin hydrated or moisturized. So make sure to put in the morning and at night. So what do we eat though to keep the collagen production at least running underneath our skin? Because the moisturizer, I would say, is topical. It does make your skin more smooth and soft. And that matters a lot, right? So it does, it works, it works. It has its value. Now, there are three foods that I will talk about that increases or at least preserves our collagen. And number one, you probably know them, is broth, bone broth. And for me, the best bone broth is beef, beef broth. But there's a way for us to protect ourselves because now we're talking about hypertension, you know, high cholesterol because of beef fat, right? So what I actually do is I would boil the beef I use a pressure cooker because there's all the beef, the tendons there, you know, they're high cholesterol, whatever, but I need the broth. So I boil that in a pressure cooker so the beef becomes really, really tender and soft. And then after boiling, I let it cool down and then I keep it in the fridge. I keep it in the fridge. I don't serve that. I don't cook that into a meal. The following morning, when I'm ready to cook my beef, I put it out and you'll notice all the fat, I would say 95% of the fat is all on top because oil and water never mix, right? So all the fat is there. Sometimes it can be as thick as this, like about one centimeter thick or even higher. And then I scoop all of that fat out and throw it. I would say that that's the best way to eat beef broth in a healthier way. Remove it. It's not going to taste as yummy because fat tastes so good. That's what my mother-in-law told me and it is true, but you don't want that, especially when we're older. So I remove that, but I have the nutrients from the beef broth. Number two, bok choy. Bok choy is an Asian vegetable. If you don't know about bok choy, I'm going to show you a photo here. I think it belongs to the cabbage family. I'm not very sure, but it's Asian and it's very, very rich in collagen. Oh, let me just go back to the beef because I forgot. I want to share a recipe. When I cook beef broth, I try to keep it clear. So here's a recipe, an easy, easy recipe that will give you two kinds of food that's rich in collagen. I would saute some garlic, which is very good for hypertension, onions, which is very healthy, and a little ginger. If you're fond of ginger, you can put more, if not just a little. And then once I've sauteed that, I'm going to pour in the soup and then the beef and then let it boil. And then I put some salt and pepper. Very, very easy recipe. Once it's boiling, I dump bok choy, like two bunches of bok choy. So you have two foods that are rich in collagen right there. It's clear, it's healthy, and it keeps your bones strong too. And I really, really recommend that. And another vegetable, this is the third food that I'm going to talk about is, and you probably have it if you're in North America, Europe, I love kale. Eat kale as a salad. It's very rich in vitamin C as well. Eat kale as a salad, chop it very finely. And I'm going to share a really yummy recipe I have using kale. I chop my kale very, very finely. I chop beets. I use pickled beets. Chop, put it with the kale. And then I chop some green pepper, red pepper, put it in there. And then I cut some broccoli, very fine, put it in there. And then avocado. Slice of avocado, chop diced avocado mix in there and then I put some walnuts 
yummy walnuts. And then if you love olives, by all means, I love olives. I add in some olives and then I chop some tomatoes. That's it. And then on the side, this is my dressing, balsamic vinegar, olive oil, lemon, salt, and pepper. I put lots of balsamic vinegar and olive oil. Mix, 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 and then use that as a dressing. And if you want to have some chicken, why not? Chicken breast is perfect with that. Those are the recipes I'm sharing with you right now that are rich in collagen. So conclusion, we will, we will lose collagen as we get older, but we don't have to lose everything all at once. There's a way to gradually lose it and still try to maintain it and still feel good about yourself by eating collagen rich foods or foods that help boost your collagen. I hope you found this episode helpful. We're talking about food this time and because we're talking about aging, we have to be happy as we age. We have to be positive. It's actually time for us to experiment on recipes that boost our collagen. While we do our normal skincare, we should never forget what we take into our body. The food that we eat, the things that we do with our body, exercise, these are things that help us stay healthy and look healthy and feel good about ourselves. I hope you're liking my episode so far. If you do, don't forget to hit the like button very easy. It's free. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do. I love sharing information, not only from my experience, from my story, but things I learned from the expert, things my doctor teaches me, and you know, things that I learned from my family, from people, and from you. I love reading your comments. You have no idea how I look forward to reading your comments because I learn a lot from you. And a lot of you answer, reply to one another, comment to one another, and support each other. I I really encourage you all to support one another, especially if you like someone else's comment on my video, look up their YouTube profile, look up their YouTube channel, because you just might like what they're talking about. And you can subscribe to one another and support one another like you support me, right? This is really a great place to be. I love meeting you all. I love reading your emails. I love answering your comments. There are comments that are a little negative, but they've really died down like collagen. <laughs> I think it depends on the episode, but I think it also depends on how, how authentic we are, right? That's why we older people have a lot of things to share, a lot of value to share, because we are using our experience, our story as a very main resource for the information that we share. And there's nothing better than experience as a teacher. And that's why I love sharing my story because I know I've been there. I've been there so many, many, many decades. And I can tell you that I don't, I'm not afraid to grow old. And uh, because at this age, we can say that we've been there. I know how it feels. I know what it does. And I understand what you're going through. And I know that it's not forever that you're going to feel bad about your skin or your looks or your body or your shape or your color even or whatever else you have on your body. It's all about finding options to make you feel better. Like if you don't like your hair, my hair is really dry. So I have extensions. I thank my younger daughter who gives me extensions. And I use a good conditioner and good shampoo. My biggest insecurity is my hair. So if my hair looks good, I'm so happy. Well, today I didn't curl it. So this is fresh from the shower. I just let it dry. And so this is it. But I'm happy because I'm seeing some gloss. And it's because we eat healthy. So share your recipes for collagen. If you have any secrets that boost your collagen on your skin, share them because everybody just needs a little bit of love and a little bit of information. And I really appreciate it when you do that. 
because you're not only sharing your information. I know it makes you feel good to feel so valued. There are so many among us who are going to appreciate your story. And don't forget to follow me on my social media platforms, Instagram at The Real D, TikTok at The Real D, and my Facebook page, Building Self-Esteem on Social Media. It's very, very important to keep our self-esteem healthy and really boosted right? So you take care of yourself. Always feel that life is always changing. Things are always changing. If we're feeling a little low, it's like a wheel. You're never always at the bottom. The wheel turns. We can never go lower than low if we're already very low. We gotta go up. We will always go up. So take care. I hope you enjoyed this video. You have a wonderful day. I love you all so much. Thank you. We are approaching 10,000 subscribers, 10,000 YouTube family members. Yeah. And to think that I was not able to do normal videos for two weeks and my shorts were like MIA, a wall, like one twice a week. And that's it because we moved to a different city and this is my new place. It's not very fixed yet. Some things have to go and some things have to really be fixed, but I have to start vlogging because I miss you all and I missed hearing from you. So thank you for your patience as I get my things together, my new home together and start vlogging again. You are amazing. Take care. Bye for now. Oh